pornography, contraband. Everyone remembers Herbert Sobel as the tyrannical and often ridiculed officer in Band of Brothers. To some, he was the villain of Easy Company's story, a leader who didn't belong in command. His reputation for cruelty and discipline seems to define him, leaving a legacy of a man unworthy of respect. Get rid of him. All weekend passes are canceled, officers included. But how much of this portrayal is fact and how much is fiction? Today, we'll dive deep into Sobel's true legacy. You'll discover what the men he trained really thought of him, why senior officers valued his contributions, and the tragic little-known story of his final years. A story that doesn't align with the version most people know. Herbert Sobel's story is far more complex than the caricature often remembered. To understand the real man, we need to uncover the truths behind his portrayal and hear directly from the men of Easy Company. The series Band of Brothers introduces Sobel as a strict, by-the-book leader, pushing Easy Company harder than anyone thought possible. From surprise inspections to grueling training exercises, Sobel's methods were tough and often humiliating. These moments define Sobel's reputation as a tyrant in the eyes of the men under his command. But while the show captures his intensity, it also shapes him into a character whose flaws overshadow his accomplishments. Oh, do not help that man! Do not help that man! Do not stop! These grueling exercises build a foundation of discipline in Easy Company, but they also created resentment among the men. The series paints him as a tyrant whose cruelty overshadowed any positive contributions. Yet as we'll see, Sobel's legacy is far more complex than the show suggests. Herbert Sobel's leadership style often clashed with the personalities and morale of the men in Easy Company. He was known for his strictness, often enforcing grueling training routines and doling out punishments for the smallest infractions. These actions, dramatized in Band of Brothers, painted Sobel as a tyrant, but the reality was more nuanced. Much of the resentment stemmed from his methods, such as surprise inspections or ordering the men to dig holes only to fill them back in. While these actions bred frustration, they were not entirely without purpose. Sobel sought to instill discipline and cohesion in Easy Company, believing it would prepare them for the harsh realities of war. However, his harsh demeanor and seeming inability to connect personally with his men created significant friction. Over time, opinions about Sobel began to evolve. Many veterans, reflecting on their experiences, credited Sobel's leadership with making Easy Company one of the best prepared units in the 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment. Donald Malarkey once said, in a strange way, it kind of filled you with pride. You got the idea he was hardening us for tougher times to come. Others noted that Sobel's discipline saved lives. His insistence on physical fitness, attention to detail, and the development of endurance meant the men could perform under extreme conditions. Though they resented him in the moment, many came to appreciate the skills they developed under his command. Specific members of Easy Company expressed gratitude for Sobel's impact. Eugene Doc Rowe, whose interactions with Sobel were limited in the series, respected Sobel for instilling toughness in the men. George Luz, known for his humor and mockery of Sobel, later admitted that the training had been critical for their survival. These reflections highlight how, despite their personal dislike for Sobel, the men understood the value of his leadership in hindsight. However, not all opinions softened over time. Some veterans, like Richard Winters, recognized Sobel's contributions but maintained that his shortcomings as a combat leader overshadowed his strengths. Sobel's inability to navigate combat tactics and foster trust ultimately led to his removal from direct command. These contrasting views present a multifaceted picture of Herbert Sobel, Neither a complete villain, nor a perfect leader, but a man whose uncompromising methods left an indelible mark on Easy Company. While Sobel's methods often sparked resentment among his men, the intense training he imposed forged a foundation of discipline. This discipline would soon prove crucial in shaping Easy Company's identity and setting the stage for their extraordinary legacy. Herbert Sobel was instrumental in shaping Easy Company into one of the most disciplined and effective units of the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment. His unyielding focus on precision, physical endurance, and attention to detail laid the groundwork for their later successes. From relentless runs up Kurahi Mountain to exhaustive inspections, Sobel instilled in his men a level of toughness that set them apart. 
Edward Babe Heffron reflected on Sobel's training, saying, we cursed him every step of the way, but I'll tell you this, when the time came, we were ready, he made us ready. Sobel's insistence on excellence often seemed extreme, but it served a critical purpose. The unit's physical conditioning and ability to adapt to stress were directly tied to the rigor of his programs. These qualities would later save lives and enable them to excel in combat. Sobel's style of leadership pushed individuals to rise to the occasion, often exposing potential leaders within the ranks. Richard Winters, though frequently at odds with Sobel, emerged as a standout figure in part due to the responsibility placed upon him during training. George Luz, known for his humor and camaraderie, acknowledged that Sobel's strict approach was integral to their cohesion. Sobel wasn't popular, but we all knew the score. He was there to make soldiers out of us, and he did. This shared experience of enduring Sobel's tough methods unified the men of Easy Company, fostering bonds that would carry them through the trials of war. While Sobel's style created friction, his efforts cultivated a level of discipline that became the hallmark of Easy Company. William Wild Bill Guarner stated, if you made it through Sobel, you could make it through anything. This collective resilience and camaraderie became key to their ability to function as an elite fighting force. Sobel's early influence, though harsh, prepared the men for the challenges they would face on D-Day, in Operation Market Garden, and beyond. In the next section, we'll examine the pivotal events that led to Sobel's eventual reassignment and how this moment reshaped the dynamics of Easy Company. Herbert Sobel's rigid leadership style, while effective in training, sowed deep resentment among Easy Company. His heavy-handed punishments and struggles with field tactics, particularly navigation, raised serious doubts about his fitness for combat leadership. The situation worsened when Sobel targeted Richard Winters with what many in the company considered an unjust court-martial, pushing tensions to a breaking point. David Kenyon Webster wrote of this period, he trained us to be ready for war, but at what cost? The company was breaking under him. This discontent ultimately united the NCOs, who risked everything to challenge Sobel's authority. In an extraordinary act of defiance, the NCOs of Easy Company formally refused to serve under Sobel. The mutiny was unprecedented and carried the threat of court-martial, but their conviction reflected the gravity of the situation. The men believed their survival in combat depended on removing Sobel from command. As Donald Malarkey recalled, we weren't trying to ruin him, we just couldn't trust him to lead us into battle. Their united stance forced higher command to take action, though the situation required careful handling to maintain unit cohesion. Despite the mutiny, Sobel's training contributions were highly valued by his superiors. Colonel Robert Sink, commander of the 506th, expressed his respect for Sobel's impact. Sobel was the hardest training officer we had. He took a group of green recruits and turned them into paratroopers. Singh's second-in-command, Major Strayer, echoed this sentiment. While Sobel had his faults, no one can deny the standards he set prepared Easy Company for war. Their remarks underline a contrast between how Sobel was viewed by those he trained versus those overseeing his work. For command, Sobel's methods achieve results even if his personal flaws created friction. Higher command resolved the mutiny by reassigning Sobel to a training position. This decision acknowledged his strengths while addressing the immediate morale issues within Easy Company. Richard Winters was promoted and his leadership style quickly restored unity and confidence among the men. While Sobel's reassignment removed him from Easy Company, his influence remained embedded in its success. His training prepared the men for the trials ahead even if his leadership style ultimately proved incompatible with combat command. In the next section, we'll explore the enduring complexities of Sobel's legacy and his life after the war. Herbert Sobel's story is one of stark contrast, a man who shaped Easy Company into the elite unit it became, yet found himself alienated from their glory. His rigorous training methods forged the discipline that helped the men survive the horrors of war but his personal flaws and strained relationships left him an outcast in the narrative of their success. The tragedy of Sobel's life lies not just in his later years of isolation, but in the profound misunderstanding of his role. His resentment toward Easy Company, as revealed by his sister, underscores the emotional wounds he carried after the war. His death in obscurity at a VA home, with malnutrition as the listed cause and no memorial service held, 
is a stark reminder of how history often fails to honor those who contribute from behind the scenes. Yet Sobel's influence endures in the stories of the men he trained, the leaders he helped shape, and the victories they achieved. Colonel Sink's praise of Sobel and the grudging respect many Easy Company veterans later expressed reveal a man whose contributions were essential, even if his leadership style was divisive. Herbert Sobel's legacy challenges us to look beyond simple narratives of heroism and villainy. It asks us to recognize that greatness often comes at a personal cost, and that those who prepare others for success may not always share in the rewards. In the end, Sobel's story reminds us that history is not just about those who lead in battle, but also those who prepare them to face it.